There are many descriptions of the Big Bang out there that are wrong. Anything that says the universe exploded from an infinitely small, dense and hot point, known as the Big Bang Singularity, are out of date. But I've seen this description in many places, in diagrams and on the internet. I've even been guilty of saying this too. But I've recently updated my understanding, so here's what cosmologists actually mean when they say Big Bang. We start about 13.8 billion years ago, when space was much smaller than it is today. For the sake of illustration, I've drawn the early universe as this little ball, but there's some caveats to this picture which I'll clear up later. In this tiny universe, space is very tightly curved, so if you travelled in a straight line, you wouldn't have to go far until you got back to where you started. The universe doesn't contain any stuff yet, no matter or radiation. It's just pure space, and this space has energy. The universe expands exponentially in a process called inflation. This means that it keeps doubling in size, so it would take you longer and longer to do your round trip journey, which means that the curvature of space is getting lower and lower until space got so big it was essentially flat and you'd be walking forever. And then there was an end to inflation. The energy inherent to space was turned into stuff. Matter, antimatter, particles and radiation. This is known as the Hot Big Bang, and this is where all the matter in the universe came from. Even though inflation stopped, space was still expanding, so over time this matter became less dense and less hot. First there were just fundamental particles, then after a microsecond the quarks condensed creating protons and neutrons, then a second later neutrinos stopped interacting strongly with the other particles and flew free. Then, after a few minutes, matter and antimatter annihilated each other, mysteriously leaving behind some leftover matter. Then, protons and neutrons came together to form the first atomic nuclei of helium. Then, after about 379,000 years, we reached the end of the hot Big Bang, when hydrogen and helium nuclei captured electrons forming the first stable atoms, and photons stopped interacting strongly with the other particles, and flew free as well. We can see these primordial photons today as the cosmic microwave background. After that, the universe behaves in a more familiar way to us. Slight unevennesses in the distribution of matter means that gravity pulls matter into clumps, which after about 100 million years get dense and hot enough to start nuclear fusion and the first stars shine. Then, 600 million years later, the first galaxies form out of collections of stars. After inflation, the expansion of space slows down and keeps slowing for many billions of years. But today we see that the expansion is accelerating again, and we call whatever's causing this accelerating expansion dark energy. We also see that matter is very clumped together in galaxies and galaxy clusters. And that's the story of the creation of our universe. So why is this our model of the beginning of the universe? It's because this is the best description we have that matches the things we observe in the universe today, like the distribution of stars, galaxies, and the temperature of the cosmic microwave background. The cosmic microwave background is a key piece of evidence about the early universe because it says that everything in the visible universe, everything in the massive radius of 46.5 billion light years, must have been in thermal equilibrium at some point in the past. This means that it must have all been packed into a tiny space and had time to all be at the same temperature, before everything moved away from each other by the expanding space. The best scenario we have to explain this is cosmic inflation. The old Big Bang Singularity model predicts other things like large temperature fluctuations, which we just don't see. So this idea that the universe exploded out of an infinitesimal point was thrown out 40 years ago. Now, my description of inflation was a little oversimplistic. I did that on purpose to get the main ideas across, but I need to clear up a few points. When I said that the universe started off being really small, that only applies to the patch that became the visible universe today. But this visible universe is only one section of a much larger universe, and we don't know how big that larger universe was, or is. Also, I drew the early universe as being a tightly curved ball, but we don't know if this is true either. All we know is that if there was any curvature to space before inflation, inflation would have made it flat. But space could have been flat before inflation, we just don't know. And we're not even 100% confident in this inflation hypothesis, it's simply the best idea we have so far that fits the observations. And unfortunately there are hard limits to what we can ever observe and know. You probably know that the further away in space you look, the further back in time you're looking. 
So that means the earliest light we can see is from recombination in the form of the cosmic microwave background. So we can't see further back beyond 379,000 years after the hot big bang by using light. Potentially we can detect primordial gravitational waves from before this time, but this will need a huge space interferometer. And even with the most idealised experiments we can conjure up in our minds, we could only ever probe the last fraction of a second of inflation, 10 to the minus 33 seconds. We can never see further back than that because the information simply doesn't exist in our universe. But the takeaway point is when cosmologists say Big Bang, they're usually talking about the hot Big Bang, which is a period of time after the end of inflation stretching for about 379,000 years. So you might be wondering, what happened before inflation? What actually started the universe? Although lots of people are thinking very hard about this, it's still a big mystery. We don't know how long inflation lasted, we don't know what existed before inflation, we don't know how big the whole universe is, and we don't know if time started or if time has existed forever. And perhaps we'll never know the answers to these questions. But I have a feeling that's not going to stop us from trying to work it out. I'd like to give a big shout out to Katie Mack for helping me understand some of these concepts. She's really good at explaining cosmology and astrophysics. You should go follow her on Twitter. Also, I'm doing a run of these Big Bang posters. Check them out on my store on DFTBA. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.